Welcome to No American Methods. And we are still here in our section on random number generation. And we started talking about generating drawings of other distributions. A very popular method is here the inversion of the distribution function. So how do we generate an F distributed sequence out of a uniform distributed sequence? And what I would like to discuss today is the acceptance rejection method. So acceptance rejection sampling. Interesting method. Yeah. And also, yeah, it gives uh, a little link to weighted uh, Monte Carlo. So the following method generates an F distributed drawing. So this is our target. So this is what we would like to do. Given that we know how to generate a G distributed drawing. So this is our source to some extent. So the F distributed is here called XI. G distributed drawings are called YI. So I can generate a G distributed sequence. Given that there is some condition, and the condition is that the constant times the density G, yeah, a constant times the density of the random variable Y, the G distributed random variable Y, is larger or equal than the density of the random variable x, the f distributed random variable x, <clears throat> for some constant, yeah, c larger than zero. Actually, c has to be larger or equal to one, because on the left hand side and the right hand side, I have densities. I can integrate. Yeah, you see that you have to be larger or equal to one with this constant. A typical example which we will also investigate is where f is the normal distribution and g is, for example, the exponential distribution. You can find a constant such that exponential minus absolute value of x, yeah? so this is the double exponential, is multiplied with this constant is larger or equal e to the minus x square half. We know how to generate exponential distributed sequences, so that would be an application. Okay, how does this work? So this is here our lemma for acceptance rejection sampling. This looks complicated, but actually, yeah, once we have studied this a little bit and once we have proven the result, you will have a very good intuition for actually what's going on. And what's going on is quite natural and intuitive. So let f denote a distribution function. So this is my target. No? So now given drawings, this is a tuple, uj, yj, of a random variable, so a random vector in two dimensions, u, y, where u and y are independent, and u has uniform distribution on 0, 1, and y has distribution function g. So actually, my source is not this sequence y. My source is actually a two-dimensional sequence, u, y, yeah. u being uniform, y being g distributed. Now let little f denote the density for x. Yeah, so little f is the derivative of capital F. Little g, the density of y. So little g is the derivative of capital G. And assume that we have a constant c such that the density of f is less or equal c times g. So here on the right hand side, you see a little picture. So this is my target density here, f. Yeah? So I would like to generate a distribution that is like that. Okay. This here is my source 
sequence, yeah, this is the sequence y, the density of the sequence y. Well, you see that here in this picture, this is a little bit like e to the minus x square half for the f and e to the minus absolute value of x for the g. Yeah? You see here in the picture, sometimes the density of f lies above the g and sometimes it lies below. Huh? So some points are more frequent, some other points are less frequent in x yeah, than in y. But I can, and this is here my assumption, multiply the g with a constant such that c times g is always on top of f. Okay, so what do we do now? So my sequence x, the sequence which I would like to generate here, this is just y, but xi is not yi, xi is yki. So I use not all y's for the x, I'm filtering some out. Yeah? So this is acceptance, rejection. So which y's do we take? So here is now the definition of these indices. The index k0 is just initialized to zero. So actually my indices start in uh, one. Yeah? So this is just for this recursion now, for this uh, formula that comes now um, to have a starting value. So the first index that we take, yeah? so the ki, so this is the index where the uniform u the uj is less or equal f of yj divided by c times g of yj. So we, we are filtering some out and the points that we filter out, these depend here on this second random variable on the u. So the u decides now, do we accept the point or do we reject the point? Note that this condition that we have here, this implies that this guy here is between zero and one. So this is like some kind of threshold between zero and one. And now we sample uniform random variables, okay? and the uniform random variables, they decide, do we take the point or do we reject the point? So this then gives me the next index ki. So I take this point, yeah? and this condition here inside just means, okay, uh, for the next one, yeah, go on and look at what is the next point where this condition here is uh, fulfilled. Okay, so looks a little bit involved here, but actually the principle is quite easy, and here's a picture. So you generate your sequence ui and yi, so your two-dimensional sequence, u uniform, y, g distributed, and then you just check this criteria, is ui less or equal f of yi divided by c times g of yi, you check this criteria, and you observe, okay, criteria is not fulfilled, reject the point, criteria is not fulfilled, reject the point, Okay, criteria is fulfilled. Take the point, and that is now your first point, xi. Okay, so you're filtering some points out, and this is your filter criteria. So now the claim is, if we do the filtering according to this, then the sequence x is f-distributed. Note that in the construction, I only need the density of f. I just need the density of f. For example, for the case of a normal distributed sequence, yeah, we know the density of the normal distribution, yeah, constant e to the minus x square half. So we have an analytic formula for that. So that would be maybe an application. Let's prove this result. And as a first step, well, let's look at 
the probability to accept a point. So how many points do we get out of this filtering approach? No? If you go back to the picture, you see that you have to generate many more points on the sequence u, y to get a few points x. How many points do you get out? Actually, you have to generate twice as many here uh, to get one candidate for x. And then out of these twice as many, we filter uh, some out, yeah, so we get even less. Yeah, the probability to accept the point is the probability that the uniform random variable u is less or equal f of y divided by c times g of y, because this here is our acceptance criteria. Okay, so you maybe wonder if we are plugging in random variables here, yeah, but note that this probability, a probability is a function on a set, yeah, on a subset of omega. So this here just means all the omegas where u of omega is less or equal f of y of omega divided by c times g of y of omega. So this is exactly the set of omegas. So now if you recall what is a drawing, yeah, the set of omegas where we accept the point. So my claim is that this is one divided by C. Yeah, so the constant C is larger or equal than one. And one divided by C is the probability to accept the point. From this, you already see that we would like to make the C as small as possible. So here in the criteria, you try to find some constant yeah, such that C times G lies on top of the distribution function f. Yeah? But actually, you know, here in the picture, it's not optimal. We would like to find the smallest c, because this will then accept more points. So first, I claim that this probability is 1 divided by c. How do you see this? Well, in a situation where you have something like that here, where you have two random variables inside here. Yeah, this is like a two-dimensional integral. A popular trick is to condition on one random variable first. Yeah, So you can write, if you move now to the second line, the probability that u is now below f of y divided by c times g of y. Yeah? This is fix a y, so now I fix y equals little y, and look at the probability that this holds for this little y, for the fixed little y. So I condition this, u less or equal f of y divided by c times g of y, conditional to y equals a given little y. And then you integrate over all the little y, so you this means I integrate here over g of y dy. So what is this conditional probability here? So this conditional probability is just the probability that u is now less or equal f applied to this little y, f of little y divided by c times g of little y. So now you know that u is uniform. Yeah, the probability that the uniform stays below a certain threshold that is between 0 and 1 is just this threshold. Mm -hmm. So I have, this is very nice, that the probability to accept a point y this is f of y divided by c times g of y. So this, we should maybe remember, yeah, this expression here gives the probability to accept a certain given point y. So now if you plug this in, okay, then you have that 
this G here cancels. So that one canceled with that one. And I just have integrate F of Y multiplied with one divided by C. Uh, but F is a density. If I integrate F of Y over the whole domain, this is just one. So I get my claim that this is one divided by C. From this observation that we just made here, yeah, that f of y divided by c times g of y. So the ratio of the density yeah, renormalized with the constant c, that this is the probability to accept the given point. This gives us now already the intuition of what is going on. Because take a look in the picture here. If you fix a point, y, yeah, then c times g of y is this whole length here. Yeah, so this is c times g of y. So what we are doing is now I sample a uniform and maybe move this c times g of y in this condition here. Multiply that to the other side. So multiply the uniform with c times g of y. So uniform multiplied with c times g of y is a number that is somewhere in this range here. Huh? It's here, here, or here. Yeah, so somewhere in this range. So we sample a uniform multiplied with c times g of y, this means I sample a value that is here in this range. Yeah? Okay, this here is c times g of this y. And then I accept the point if I'm below f. So this means this region here is the region where we accept the point, and this region here is the region where we reject the point. So if you sample according to the distribution c times g. Okay, c times g is not a density, but apart from a renormalization with one divided by c, yeah, it gives you the proportion of points. Yeah? So these points here occur more often. These points here occur less often. So we now filter the points out so that such that the proportion matches that of the target density. You just throw away this area here. So this area is thrown away out of my points. And I just get yeah, the proportions that match the target density. So the filter criteria is just adjusting the relative proportion of the point y when we sample y. Okay, so now it's quite intuitive what we are doing. We are filtering the points according to a criteria that contains the two densities. The ratio of the densities we divide by the g, we multiply with the f, yeah? we get rid of the g density, we, we uh, insert the f density to get this sequence x. So what remains is to prove that this sequence has really distribution function f. Okay, so let's start on the left-hand side. So I would like to prove that the random variable x has distribution function f. So the distribution function is the probability that capital X is less or equal little x. Yeah, let's calculate just this expression. Capital X is equal to the Y. So this is just Y should be less or equal little x, x, conditional to accepting the point. So the probability capital X less or equal little x is the same as the probability Y less or equal little x, conditional to accepting the point. Yeah, the formula for the conditional probability is the probability of you know, the set for which I would like to have the probability. So this is now y less or equal x intersected with the condition set renormalized, yeah, so divided by 
the probability of the condition set. So now I can plug in that I already know that this here below is one divided by C. So I get a C in front and I just have the probability that Y is less or equal X intersected with the condition set. So now I have again two random variables here involved. Yeah, I have the uniform U and the Y. So I do the same trick again. So I replace now the Y with some Z and I integrate over G of Z dZ. Yeah. So I'm conditioning on capital Y equals little z, and then I average over all these sets. So what do we have is, I now just investigate the probability that this little z is less or equal to the little x here, uh, intersected with my condition set, and my condition set is now just the uniform u should be less or equal f of little z divided by c times g of little z. So this is just a number now on the right-hand side. You can get, get rid of this first part. So I can just write this here in the upper bound of the integral. So this is integrate from minus infinity to x, the probability that u is less or equal f of z c times g of z. So since u is uniform, the probability will lie below the threshold is again just the threshold. So I get integrate from minus infinity to little x f of z divided by c times g of z and integrate with respect to g of z dz. The g cancels here, okay? The c cancels and I just integrate my density little f from minus infinity to x yeah, this is now the distribution function f, evaluated at x. Now, indeed, x is f distributed. Okay, you see, again, what is happening here. We have inside a g distributed random variable. So if I write it as an integral, I write integrate g dz here. But I have a filtering that gives me a factor that is f divided by g. Yeah? So I'm removing the g here, and I just get the f. Yeah, so very nice method, and the intuition is maybe clear from this picture here. Yeah? So you adjust the frequency of the points yeah, such that you transform to the target density. Okay, so maybe important remark, yeah? I like to apply the numerical methods and I would like to have a robust numerical methods. And often you have to combine many different numerical methods. For example, later we will see how we approximate a partial derivative. A partial derivative is approximated by calculating a finite difference with a, sh a small shift, yeah? So maybe just recall how you calculate a finite difference that is part of a later session. If you have some function h and you would like to approximate the partial derivative, then you can do this by doing h plus h at x plus epsilon minus h at x divided by epsilon. So sometimes there are applications where we would apply a small shift to a parameter. And you should be careful. Assume that your distribution function f and g, they depend on some model parameter theta. So for example, here in this example, this x here, could be this model parameter theta. 
okay? And now you would like to calculate the dependency on this theta. How does your result depend on theta in the sense of a derivative? Yeah, then you would maybe evaluate your result at the parameter theta and theta plus epsilon, right? it's a small shift. However, if we use this method here, the generated sequence likely is discontinuous in this parameter. So even if the densities are smooth, yeah? for example, this parameter could be, if it is a normal distribution, the mean, the variance, and so on of this dis distribution function. So why is that? Yeah, it may be that this here is a smooth function on the right in your acceptance criteria, but the decision is u less or equal or larger than this function on the right, this decision is of course not smooth. Yeah? So either you reject the point or you accept the point. So it can happen that you accept the point if theta is theta zero, but you reject the point if theta is theta zero plus a small value epsilon. And this can be dangerous, especially if this sequence that you generate is used to sample a higher dimensional random values. Okay, so let's have a look at the picture. So what I'm talking about here is that it can happen that if you have a small parameter that affects here this criteria, that suddenly this point here is rejected. So this point here is suddenly removed from the series. Okay, you, you say, okay, maybe not a big deal. Yeah, we are just removing one point. Yeah, so either we have one point more or less. So if you just sample always the same number of points, you remove one point here, another point will be added to the end of the series. Yeah, but this is a random series. These are completely different points. Yeah. So you see that already there yeah, is some kind of discontinuity. But if you sample 10 million points, the this Continuity is something like a one divided by 10 million. Yeah? Only one point is affected. But now assume that you use this sequence here in an algorithm like that, yeah? where we generate from a one-dimensional sequence a two-dimensional sequence. Then it may be um, a big problem because if now this point here is missing, yeah? it means that this point here is missing and this guy would go here. Yeah, and this guy would then go here. So the composition of the vector suddenly changes dramatically. Okay, so the whole sequence is scrambled by this. It's a completely different sequence. So you have to be a little bit careful. Uh, the ac acceptance rejection criteria can generate a discontinuity in the sequence. Yeah, so in your in your result. So the remark here is that you should keep parameters that change in your model um, out of this method. For example, if you would like to generate a normal distributed random variable with a certain mean yeah, and standard deviation, use this method to generate a standard normal and then use your parameter to rescale the values of the sequence. Yeah? Because this rescaling is then just smooth yeah, in, in a parameter. Okay, so in our lemma, we had u uniform y being G distributed. How do we get the Y? I mentioned an example, it could be an exponentially distributed random variable or a double exponential. Of course, we could get the sequence Y, the G distributed sequence by using the inversion of the distribution function. So we may actually combine this here with our inversion of the distribution function method on the Y. So this is a nice addition. Uh, because, yeah, it will make the method yeah, even more universal. And it looks like this. 
So I assume that in addition, we have the inverse of the distribution function g. Yeah? So I have g inversed in closed form or yeah, a sufficiently accurate approximation. So in that case, I can generate now my sequence y by applying the inverse of the distribution function to some uniform, and this uniform I now call v, vj. So then acceptance rejection sampling goes as follows. Sample a two-dimensional uniform, so a tuple u, v. So this is uniform on 0, 1 squared. And now take the v to generate the y and check the acceptance criteria. So this means your x is the g inverse applied to the v ki, yeah, where the v ki is given by our acceptance criteria. So is the u less or equal, and now I apply the target density f to the g inverse of the uniform v, and I divide by the density g applied to the g inverse of this uniform v. Yeah, so that's maybe a bit nicer. Yeah, so now you have. Uh, several ingredients. You have a uniform on 0, 1 squared. Yeah? So this we know how to do. I have uh, the density F, the inverse of the distribution function G, so capital G inverse, and the density G. And of course, I also need this constant C. I have a code that implements this in a very generic way. So this code is acceptance rejection random number generator. So you find this in the FinMAT library, but it's also in our lecture repository. And maybe we can have a short look. Yeah, it's a very generic implementation of the method. And you see again how the method works. So this is here in our lecture repository here, or if you go to the FinMAT library, you find this also under random numbers. So this is the code. So my ingredients is a uniform random number generator, the target density F, the reference density G, the inverse of the distribution function, capital G inverse, and the constant C, yeah, which has to be provided, provided from the outside. Okay, so these, these guys are the ingredients. For this random number generator that is taken as a source, this is a uniform random number generator. It should have dimension at least two. Yeah, So we check the dimension. If it has more than two dimensions, I just take the first two components. Yeah, But actually, it should be two-dimensional. So given these ingredients, this is here how acceptance rejection generates the sequence X. Yeah? So it's not much. So what we do is we implement our interface random number generator 1D, a one-dimensional random number generator. So we are filtering a one-dimensional sequence out of this two-dimensional sequence. And here is the code. We are very short. So first, I initialize the random the boolean rejected to true. So I will reject the point. Yeah? So that's uh, yeah, actually these two. Um, yeah, that's because I have here a y loop. Yeah? So I initialize my boolean rejected to true because I will here enter a y loop, and I would like to first enter the loop. Yeah? And this loop is performed as long as the variable is rejected. So I will exit the loop when the variable is not rejected, and then I will return it. 
I initialize the variable that I return. Actually, that I initialize here is yeah, actually not would not be necessary because I will first enter the loop and I will set it to a reasonable value. Okay, so then we enter the loop. I take the two-dimensional uniform. So you see this here is now my tuple. This is my tuple UV, the two-dimensional uniform. The first component is the U. And the second component is the V. From this V, I generate now the Y by using the inverse of the dif distribution function. So this is where I use now here this double unary operator, the ICDF. This generates now the Y, the candidate. And then I check if I accept or reject the candidate. So it's rejected if f is less than u times c times g of y. In other words, it would be accepted if f is large or equal u times c times g of y. So if you divide by the c, if you divide by the g, this is u is less or equal for accepted f divided by c times g of y. So this here is the criteria if it is rejected. Yeah, if it is rejected, I continue this loop. Once this rejected switches to false, I accept the point and I return it. That's the acceptance rejection method. Yeah. So quite short code for such a complicated lemma here. Okay, let's, let's have a small example for where you could apply the method. One example is the inhomogeneous exponential distribution. Yeah, recall the inhomogeneous exponential distribution. This has distribution function. Okay, it's a stochastic time. So the tau, my target distrib distribution, the probability that tau is less or equal a given t, yeah, this is one minus exponential minus integral from zero to capital T. And then we have some parameter lambda of s ds. Lambda of s is now the um, intensity. So problem was inversion of the distribution function could be difficult yeah, if we need to invert this integral. But if we can calculate the integral, then it means I can calculate the density. And acceptance rejection does not require to invert the distribution function uh, of the distribution function f. I just require the density little f. Yeah, what is the sequence y in this case. Yeah, I can easily generate a sequence that has exponential distribution, so with a constant intensity lambda. So let's consider an exponentially distributed random variable y with density g being some lambda times exponential minus lambda t. Okay, what would be the lambda? Well, if we have that the minimum of the lambda of t is larger than zero, then I have here the lower bound. So this is my lambda min to this intensity function lambda. Then I use this lambda min as the intensity for the little g for the random variable y that I will sample. So recall, you can just generate y now as using inversion of the distribution function. So this is one divided by lambda min multiplied with minus logarithm one minus some uniform V. Yeah? Good application for the combination with the inversion of the distribution function. So then you have for the density f, okay, so now I need to check, 
can I dominate the density F with a constant times G? So for your density F, which is lambda times exponential, then minus integral the lambda SDS. Yeah, for that, you can first make this integral inside smaller if you do this lambda min instead of the lambda. So you make the integral inside smaller if you use lambda min instead of the lambda. But since this is exponential minus this integral with positive lambda, this means I make the function larger. So this is less or equal lambda of t exponential minus lambda min t. Yeah, now you see that in front of the g, you don't have the lambda of t, you have in front the lambda min. Yeah, So let's plug in the g. So then you need to adjust with the lambda min and the lambda. So it's lambda divided by lambda min in front. And then you make it even larger if you now take the maximum. So now I take the maximum value instead of the lambda of t. So you see this here is your constant c. So c times g now dominates the density f. And you also see that the c gets closer to 1 uh, the more constant this intensity is. Clearly, if this intensity is constant, you can just use g directly. Okay, so the algorithm is now combining with the inversion of the distribution function, generate the tuple u v on 0, 1, calculate your y, which is your candidate for the default time for the inhomogeneous, exponentially distributed stochastic time tau using the inversion of the distribution function. Okay, apply to this V. For this candidate, check your acceptance criteria with the U. If it is met, you have found your inhomogeneous, exponentially distributed stochastic time tau. Yeah, that was a nice example for the acceptance rejections. So another very nice example for the exceptions rejection method is that of sampling a normal distribution. Yeah, it's a little bit more involved and we also see there are different ways of doing it. And maybe it also provides you again with some intuition for the method. So I would like to generate a normal distributed random variable, x. Yeah. So the first approach is to use an exponentially distributed random variable, y, yeah, for the sequence y. The problem is that the exponential distributed random variable, okay, so this guy has the density exponential minus x, this only generates positive values. But my normal distribution is symmetric around zero, so it has positive values and negative values. One possible way out of this is to sample not the normal distributed random variable, but to sample the absolute value of x, so the absolute value of the normal distributed random variable, and then take an additional step and sample the sign. So I sample another, say, uniform random variable, yeah. take uh, a plus if I'm larger than one half, take a minus if I'm smaller than one half. Any way you do it, you sample plus one, minus one, each with probability one half, and that is then the sign. Okay, so you have that your x is given as a random sign multiplied with 
absolute value of x. Absolute value of x is the random variable that is the absolute value of a normal distributed random variable. Yeah, this x has density f, which is just two times the density of the normal distribution because we just flip yeah, everything from one side to the other side. So it's every point occurs twice as often, yeah? but then only for the positive, positive values, yeah? for x larger than zero. So let's use now acceptance rejection with exponentially distributed y to sample this absolute value of x. So what is the constant C? So I would like to dominate this function F with some C times G of X. So let's have a look at F of X divided by G of X. So what's that? So I have two divided by square root of two P multiplied with exponential minus one half X squared. So this is the F and now I divide by G. So dividing by G is divided by exponential minus X. This is multiply with exponential X. This is just a plus X here. So I would like to have something that is yeah, bounded yeah, from above. So maybe I can achieve that the stuff here inside is always negative. So this is one half X squared plus X. So let's add a bracket here and do it two times X. Ah, so if I add the bracket, I have a minus in front. Just give you a plus one. Okay, so I added actually a plus one half. So I need to subtract again a minus one half. Uh, and also with the bracket, it's a plus one half, right? So now you see that this is just minus one half x minus 1 squared. So you can bound this. Okay, so the e to the minus something positive, yeah, you just throw it away. That is uh, less or equal 1. You can just bound this by this constant here, 2 divided by square root of 2p. And then you have exponential plus 1 half. This is a square root of e. So this here is my constant C. So this is now my constant C because if I divide by this, F divided by C times G is less or equal one. So I need to use this constant C here yeah, to have that F divided by C times G is less or equal one. So I can apply the acceptance rejection method. Yeah, let's have a look at a small code that does this. And I call this here the 3D version. Why do I call it the 3D version? Because I need three uniforms. I need the uniform U to sample my acceptance rejection criteria. I need the uniform V to do inversion of the distribution function to sample the Y. And then I need a third uniform to sample the sign. So I need actually three uniforms to generate now the X. Yeah. Two uniforms to generate the absolute value of X using acceptance rejection, another uniform to sample the sign. Let's have a look at this yeah, using Mersenne Twister. So you find an example in our lecture repository here in the random numbers experiments. There is normal distributions with 
acceptance rejections. There are different versions here, acceptance rejection with Mersenne Twister in 3D and 2D with Horton sequence. Let's just use the Mersenne Twister as an example here. Okay, so what do we do? We have a loop you know, over all points that we would like to generate. I would like to generate number of sample points. Again, I initialize my Boolean that I'm rejecting to true. I, gener I generate now the two uniforms, U and V. I generate the exponentially distributed candidate uh, using inversion of the distribution function. And then I check my acceptance criteria. Uh, so my acceptance criteria is, this is U smaller than F divided by C times G. But we have calculated F divided by C times G here. This is just exponential minus one half X minus one squared, yeah, which is between zero and one. So I just check now, is U larger than that? If that is the case, I reject it. So I loop over this until I accept the point. Yeah, I'm always sampling two ones here. And then if I have found the absolute value you know, candidate, I sample the sign and I have that X is S times absolute value of X. I add this now here to this array. You know, this is the array list here. And then I'm just uh, plotting this you know, and we can have a look. Let's comment all the others out and run this guy. Indeed, yeah, looks quite like a normal distribution. Well, I also have a test that uses the inversion of the distribution function method. Let's have a look there. Okay, so I loop over all the sample points I would like to generate. I generate one uniform. I apply the inverse of the distribution function to it and I add it to my list, yeah? Much simpler code, yeah? Uh, then I also just plot this list. Note also that in addition, I check here the timings, yeah? I'm recording the system milliseconds counter at the start and the system milliseconds counter at the end, and I calculate the time that was required between these two boundaries uh, to perform the calculations. I also do this here for my 3D version. Yeah, I have here the timing. And I'm reporting a little bit the time that we need to perform these calculations. So let's run the experiment again. And now you have also the benchmark using the inversion of the distribution function. And you see that inversion of the distribution function is yeah, a little bit faster, yeah. You see six, yeah, it's twice as fast, twice as fast. Yeah, you need actually to generate more sample points here from the Mersenne Twister. And you also have a certain acceptance rate, yeah, so you need to generate even more points. I call this 3D version because there is a, another way of doing this. And actually this other way is maybe a little bit more natural because this thing here is sampling the sign, yeah, looks a bit strange. Instead, we could search for a distribution function that is defined on the whole domain from minus infinity to plus infinity of the normal distribution. So a distribution function for the random variable y that generates also the negative ones. And this could be the double exponential so the double exponential is just that I now flip the y yeah, from I now flip the y from the positive side yeah also to the negative side. Yeah. So I create a double exponential, and um, I'm sampling then the double exponentially distributed random variable y yeah so which has this density here. So you see the density is now one half but then it's exponential minus absolute value of X. Very similar to what we did in the previous case, yeah, where we flipped the normal distribution to the positive side. Yeah, now I split 
yeah, the exponential distributed random variable, I split it uh, to the negative and positive side. My target density is now the standard normal, so one divided by square root of 2g, where the acceptance criteria is exactly the same. Because when you look back, is you see there's a 2 here, okay, and a 1 here, right, in front of the exponential. Now, the 2 has gone, and I have a 1 half here. So this is just, instead of doubling one guy, yeah, I'm not now making half the other guys. So if I look at the ratio, actually, this is exactly the same value. So the ratio F divided by C times G is exactly exponential minus one half X minus one squared. Well, but now be careful, X can be positive and negative. So it's absolute value of X. So like here, but now since X can be positive and negative, it's absolute value of X with the same constant C, my constant C is also square root of 2e divided by p. But I avoid a little bit the sampling of the sign. I need the g and the g inverse because I would like to generate from a uniform v the double exponential y. So how do we sample a double exponential y? Let's call, calculate the distribution function. The distribution function, capital G, this is just the integral from minus infinity to little x over the density. So this here is my density, G of C. Yeah, if the x is less than zero, so the C is less than zero, so minus absolute value of C is just C, C. So what I integrate is one half exponential C. So integrating one half exponential C is one half exponential C. Yeah. Upper bound is X, lower bound is minus infinity, yeah, zero. So I have one half exponential X. Yeah. So that guy is clear. So the other part is this here is the integral from minus infinity to zero g of xi, the xi. This is just one half, okay? Now it's a density and it's a matrix, so this has to be one half. And then the other part is just minus one half exponential minus x minus one. So that's now the distribution function. That looks a little bit involved because also of the two cases, but you see, you can write this in a form that avoids the two cases if you include now the sign here. Okay, let's check this. If X is negative, this sign is negative, and actually I have one half plus one half exponential minus absolute value of X minus one. Yeah, So I have a one half minus one half and a one half exponential minus absolute value of x. But x was never negative, so minus absolute value of x is just x. So that's okay for x less than zero. And for x larger than zero, the sign is just a plus one. So you see that this just agrees with the expression you have here. Okay, so this is the distribution function of the double exponential. Now I need to invert this. Yeah? So if you need this to invert this, what you do is you solve g of y equals the uniform v. You solve that to the uh, random variable y. Yeah? So first thing I do, I do a plus one half. So then you multiply with minus the sign of x. Sorry, a minus one half. Oh, I'm not so concentrated today. <laughs> so 
So let's try. Let's solve this G applied to Y equals V. So first thing I do, I move the one half to the other side. So I have a V minus one half. Then I multiply with minus sine of X times, uh, sorry, then I divide. <laughs> Okay, then we divide by minus sine of x times one half. So this gives me actually here a two minus one. And this is now multiplied with the sine of y minus the sine of y. So this is minus sine of y multiplied with two times v minus 1. So we are left with, on the other side, exponential minus absolute value of y minus 1. Okay, I have the minus 1. This gives me another plus 1. I'm left with, on the other side now, exponential of minus absolute value of x. So this means I take the logarithm. Okay, I have the logarithm. So now on the left-hand side, I'm left with minus absolute value of y. Well, minus absolute value of y is actually minus the sine of y multiplied with y. So I just divide by minus the sine of y, but dividing by minus the sine of y is like multiplying with minus the sine of y. So I get uh, minus sine of y multiplied with the logarithm of 1 minus sine of y times 2v minus 1. Okay, long calculation. So this gives me now my y. So y is equal sine of y times logarithm 1 minus sine of y times 2v minus 1. Yeah, this we have now here. So this gives me now the y as a function of my uniform v. Uh, it's maybe a little bit irritating that I have the sine of y still there. I would like to have a function of v only, but you can check. So if y is positive, yeah, if the sine of y is a plus one, then this means that g of y is larger than one half. Okay, my distribution function is, uh, my density is symmetric, so the distribution function is larger than one half. So this means that my v is larger than one half. So now we have that v is larger than one half. This means that 2v minus 1, so the thing that we have inside here also, this is large or equal 0. So y large or equal 0 is equivalent to 2v minus 1 large or equal 0. So I can replace the sine of y with sine of 2v minus 1. So I have now the inversion of the distribution function given as a function of my uniform v. This is minus sine of 2v minus 1 multiplied with the logarithm of 1 minus, okay, sine of 2v minus 1 multiplied with 2v minus 1 is just the absolute value of 2v minus 1. That was a bit involved calculating the inversion of this double exponential distribution function, but now I can apply acceptance rejection in the natural form. And the claim is that this now gives me my x. So my x is now this y, well, conditional to u being less than f of y c times g of y. Huh? Note that this is very similar to what we did before. This here is sampling S. And this part, minus logarithm 1 minus uniform, this is 
an exponential. Yeah. So you see, actually, what we are doing is we take a uniform V, and then we take 2 times V minus 1. So that actually means that you just look between 1 half and 1, or between 0 and 1 half. Yeah? So it doesn't matter. So the, the, you, 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 uh, you take this to sample the exponential. And the sign is then decided, are you between 0 and 1 half, or between 1 half and 1? We actually use one uniform to split between the sign and a uniform on half of the uh, domain. So the 2D version is very similar. I call this here now the 2D version. Advantage is I only need two uniforms. Okay, so this is what we do. I sample two uniforms, U and V, and then I calculate the sign the actually then exponential z yeah and the x is y which is s times z conditional to accepting the point let's have a look at the code so here in my normal distribution with acceptance rejection experiment i also have this 2d version let's have a look at that code so i have a random number generator i take me as a twister I initialize my rejected boolean to true, so I loop, I enter this loop here in the beginning, and I will loop as long as I'm rejected. I sample two uniforms, U and V, and I calculate now my X, yeah, so this is actually the, on the slide, the Z. This is minus logarithm, one minus absolute value, 2v minus 1. Okay, this formula. This is my x. Then I check my um, acceptance rejection criteria. As I mentioned, same criteria as before. Uh, exponential minus 1 half x minus 1 squared is the threshold that decides whether we accept or reject the point using the uniform u. I calculate the sign which is the sign of 2v minus 1. Yeah? So the sign is positive if the v is larger than 1 half. The sign is negative if the v is smaller than 1 half. Yeah? And my normal distribution random variable is this multiplied with this, which is the formula that we have here below, yeah? conditional to that we accept. Yeah, I add this to my array here and just create a small plot. So now let's run all these three guys uh, together. Acceptance rejection with three uniforms, 3 .3, uh, 1.3 seconds. Acceptance rejection with two uniforms, one second. Yeah. Inversion of the distribution function still much faster. Yeah? You also see that you have yeah, 0.3 second in generating this um, additional uniform. I also have the same stuff using low discrepancy sequences. This is especially interesting because now you really need a three-dimensional sequence. I need a Halton sequence in three dimension to generate my random vector u, v, W, and from the W, I calculate the sign. From the V, I calculate my candidate, and the U decides whether I accept or reject the point. So in the 3D version, you really need a Halton sequence in three dimensions. For the 2D version, you need the Halton sequence in two dimensions. You sample U and V. Yeah, you create the double exponential by creating here the exponential and here the sign, both from the V, yeah? and again, the U decides whether you accept or reject the point. Now, this also works with quasi-random number sequences. So now you can run all these guys together 
in this example, I also print the acceptance rate. This is my little constant. You see, we're throwing away 25% of the points. And you see the quasi random number sequences, they take quite a long time. Yeah, the pseudo random number generator mass and twister is uh, very fast. Okay, so maybe you like to play with this. So you find this experiment here in our lecture repository at normal distribution with acceptance rejection experiment. I also prepared a little vi visualization of what is going on. And you can click here this uh, GeoGebra link uh, to have a look at this. And this concludes maybe now nicely the session that you get another intuition for what is going on. So this is here. So what are we doing? We are first sampling a candidate, Y, from inverting the distribution function of the double exponential. So I have my random variable V here. This is between zero and one. And I'm inverting the double exponential. So you see that V larger than one half creates the positive side, V smaller than one half creates the negative side. Yeah. It is uh, symmetric. So this is inversion of the distribution function using the double exponential. This is the formula here. Then you generate another uniform U. So I'm in two dimensions. I'm making Monte Carlo integration in two dimensions. Okay. And this second uniform will now decide whether you accept or reject the point. So there is a certain boundary here where you accept or reject the point. And this boundary comes from plugging this point into e to the minus one half x minus one squared. So if you plug this complicated function into this exponential function, you can represent actually this acceptance rejection criteria as a function of u and v. Yeah? I plug the y in the acceptance criteria and I have a function of u and v. So I can plot this function. This is this function here. This is the function that is the criteria. And if you are now in this red area, you reject the point. If you are in the green area, you accept the point. So this is actually acceptance rejection we sample in this two-dimensional cube here, and we generate the y uh, using the v, and then as a candidate, we accept or reject it. Well, there's a little subtle thing here. If you sample here this point, actually, we are throwing away these guys here, and we are keeping these guys here. So if we do this in a Monte Carlo simulation, for example, like here, it means that you have a sum where you throw away a few points and you keep a few other points. This is a bit inefficient. Instead, we could just multiply with the proportion of points that we keep. So if we go back to this picture, we could just use the weight that is defined by the probability to accept the point in the sum and use the point. And this motivates the weighted Monte Carlo method. So if you use now a sequence that is generated by acceptance rejection in a Monte Carlo sum, in a Monte Carlo integral, instead of throwing away the points, you could just keep the point and weight the function result with the corresponding acceptance rate. This we can do in the next session. Yeah, very short section, yeah, but maybe a nice link between acceptance rejection and Monte Carlo method. That was it for today.